we're at the firehouse the other day and um, we're sitting around after food and just talking and the idea of the simulation theory comes up. Um, oh you, yeah. Yeah. I was We've say, been you, chatting. You, you know the simulation We've theory. We've been chatting. So the, we'll go to the basics. The basics of simulation and the most compelling is we are in a simulation right now. So everything you know, everything you experience, it's all fake world. None of it is, is real. Yeah. Um, well, it's a fun thing to think about. I mean, quite frankly, it's, you know, the, the reasons of why you exist is very compel very compelling. And I think, uh, diving into this has been rather, you know, exciting for people that, uh, have never heard anything about it. Uh, yeah, it's well, pretty awesome. It makes a lot of, I think it makes a lot of like theological or, you know, the old exist- philosophy class. Yeah. I was gonna say it makes philosophical questions much right. more approachable because it feels like something I could believe. Like I've seen a video game. So right. if I'm living in a video game, I can kind of understand the questions that I'm asking. Well, let's dive in. We made a couple notes. Let's dive mm-hmm. into the nuts and bolts of what it is. And then we'll kind of get into some discussions just so yeah, anybody yeah. never heard about it before. Sure. Let's kind of walk them through okay. it. So firstly, Nick Bostrom's the guy that does it. I think 2003 is when he has this theory. And this theory is not specifically simulations are definite and you are in one. It's more, there are three possibilities. Right. First is intelligent species go extinct before they can make any of this kind of stuff. So they just, they just nuclear bomb, any type of thing that just the technologies they produce yeah. end up biological weapons, something wipes we everybody out. We kill ourselves out. out. Yeah. Right. So, so we just don't, and we could be there. We, we could, we could be this close to, to nuking ourselves to oblivion. And so we never create simulations. Right. Uh, two would be, we can reach that technology and then we just decide not to for whatever reason. We just, we just decide not to, which I have some thoughts on. Sure, sure. And then we'll go to the third one, which I think is the one that everyone just assumes is true of this, which is intelligent species can create, they do create, and therefore we are just as likely as not to be in a simulation that is created by another species. Well, a simulation is kind of a weird thought because everyone, I think, was introduced to it in a very real way with the movie series The Matrix. You're yeah. plugging into it. It's this full-blown world of um, normalness, really. It's, right. it's the world as you know it. And it was very crazy to think of it fictional. And I don't even remember when the series was. I believe The Matrix was before that, but I'm not sure. I thought that was in the 90s. But yeah, No, I think you're right. I think it was 90s. Yeah, so maybe you know the theory was based on whoever kind of thought that up. Maybe he maybe... just was so jazzed by Neo. He's like, oh, this has got <laughs> to be real. I want Neo it to be real. and Morpheus inspired this maybe. But no, I think it's just kind of crazy if you think about it in terms of the simulation to me is the idea of, the why or why would you ever need to do a simulation? And I think there's a whole lot of reasons that are super compelling. I mean, entertainment for one, I don't yeah. think that you well, would argue with anybody that it's, entertainment, it's what we already do, right? You play in video games, you want to go on a trip, but uh, you're a little unhealthy. You know, you, you've eaten a little too much in your day. You've got diabetes. You need to stay close to home. Mm-hmm. Hey, do you want to go to Egypt? Throw these goggles on. It's going to be the real deal. Right. You know, in the, in the short, I see all kinds of reasons why you would want to be in a simulation or have access to it. But the idea that this is a simulation currently, I it's, know, it's, it's a just, step up. It's, Cause like what you're describing is really like, I'm aware that simulation exists and I'm using it to accomplish my goal. Right. So I plugged myself into the simulation to go experience, but I don't feel that way right now. And you don't feel that way right now. So, this is a whole different level of like the simulation exists and I don't know it. Right. And that's a weirder place to be. Cause like, why would that simulation exist? It's true. It's true. I think, I think what we should discuss that would be fun mm-hmm. is if you can get your head wrapped around like true reasons of why you would need it. Yep. You know, when you go down that path, all of a sudden you put your tinfoil hat on, mm-hmm. you um, get the magic fires burning. Right. And it makes a whole lot of sense of why the, there would even be a possibility of a simulation. So so let's start with that then. Like what would be, what would be a reason that you would create a simulation where okay. the participants don't know they're in it? Here's, here's my best. Your be- okay. My best, my best guess. Okay. Is everybody ready for this? So picture this. I'm there. You've got a chopped off arm. In 100 years, we can grow it back. Mm -hmm. You've got an ear issue. You can't hear quite right. 
medicine can fix your hearing. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. We grow genes. We can do all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the human body now can last three or 400 years just due to modern medicine. But we still haven't figured out how to really turn back the clocks. Maybe you're in this window of which technology is multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. How old's the iPhone? Think about the first one to this one. Right. You're talking about a really small segment. Mm -hmm. With the advances in medicine, you may be looking at 150 years, maybe they're able to completely grow back an arm. Mm -hmm. They're able to prolong the youth a little bit longer. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, the average age is 150. Then it's 200. Then it's 250. The one thing that I think is insane is as soon as you take the threshold over, think about it, a scientist. When is he at his prime? Maybe 38 to 60, maybe mm -hmm. 70, maybe 80, but it kind of sure. just depends on when the health begins to decline where the mental capacity is not going to keep up. So I find the most compelling argument to be as the arc goes now, if you're thinking in parallels of how there could be a simulation, think of in 150 or 200 years of if you've moved the body into living 300 years mm -hmm. and the mind got more left in it, mm -hmm. wouldn't you want to simulate the baby mind, the young mind to be ready sooner? So what I mean by that, if the body's going to get worn out and okay. we know the technology advances can really exponentially grow in the years of locked in greatness, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to live to be 300 years old, but it takes an individual maybe 30 to 40 years to find themselves and really become a functioning brain. What if you could take a 20 year old, run them in a simulation, give them multiple existences all in a blink of an eye because it's fast, 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 fast. They sit in a tank for 30 days. They've lived five different lifestyle lives that built their subconscious, taught them tons of skills all happen in a blink of an eye. And probably like morality, like they're, they're learning how to love, how to be, right. how to, how to interact, how to care, right. do all those things. And you're saying like, in, in the course of a, of a weekend, you know, now all of a sudden they're, they're 120 years old well, you, in the mind. Yeah. You got to think, I mean, well in the matrix, it, it's always interesting when you think of these creative people that come up with these concepts, but it's interesting. You close your eyes, you know, he does the mm -hmm. little deal and now he right. knows Kung Fu. Right. And the movie portrayed that as like, boom, it right. Happened. It's, it's like done. a download. But what if it was actually that download mm -hmm. is literally him, him learning, learning in from a simulated a fashion. What if he was there for 35 years learning in a simulation, right. but it's a snap of a finger. He downloaded that as the exterior world. It downloaded instantly. Yeah. But in his brain, it was a 30 year experience mm -hmm. of learning the true essence of Kung Fu. And if you think about it like that, yeah. when you move through life, the body lasts longer and longer. And then wouldn't you want to backtrack and say, well, we've got the technology to give the brain what it needs to even Start even earlier. move it to 20. Mm -hmm. Now we can make everybody geniuses at 20. Right. Instead now of think waiting. of the mental capacity and the exponential growth we can get. So Boom. I, I like what you've Boom. got there. Here's the depressing part that I'm seeing. Oh, man, I thought <clears throat> it was foolproof. No, it's, it's very foolproof. But if that's true, okay. th that person, like, why would they need to not know? that they're in the simulation. They, they could know that they're in a simulation. It's fine. So that means that if I don't know and you don't know, and that is the reason that it's happening, we're just, we're just side characters. We're NPCs walking around with our only purpose to be something that if some sim, like simulated mind is walking through, they can encounter us. And I was I can... going to interrupt you before that, but you got to like a worser point. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> I don't want to be a puppet. No, you're uh, the, M you are an I'm NPC. Defini I'm definitely the puppet. No, Ugh, that's a, that's a little grueling. That's kind of hard to swallow. Right. Well, but... I mean, you got to imagine though, if you're, if I'm creating a simulated universe and it is a, it is a synthetic fully, like there is no one-to-one -one ratio. Every human that exists is, is also in the simulation but instead we're filling it out with teachers, instructors, life partners, then there's a really good odd that you are not the important person in the, this. The only trump card would be is just like every argument. You always can see 
the side, the easy cop out of, well, the creator would know that the true way to understand it at its fullest is, of course, to be unknowing and come to the mm. conclusion yourself, right? Sure, yeah. But what in life have you ever just got handed to you that you were an expert in? Well, it, well to, to your point, if you, every time I dream, I'm not aware that I'm in a dream, but I, I have an experience of the dream. And it's not like it, I went to sleep that night. Like I knew I was going to sleep, and yet I am fooled every time I'm in a dream. So it could even just be, yeah, I went to sleep into this simulator, knowing I was going into a simulator. And then I experience this entire thing as a dream. Right. And then I wake up, however, you know, I will say I die at 72. I wake up at 72 years old here, but there a weekend passed. I go, oh my gosh, I forgot I was in a simulation. All right, well, what's my next one? Yeah, yeah, but you could also think of it in terms of, you know, you get pieces of reincarnation embedded in this. You get pieces Mm. of other... Well, thought dialogue and that's, things. Now that, we're talking theology in the midst of this. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Well, well I mean, okay, g- go me, there. Give me your, I wanted to hear your your <laughs> take on what would be your ultimate scenario. Before we get too crazy, I got to hear like, why does it exist? All right, you you want dark world or you want like happy world? Let's I got, do, I got let's two. Do dark. Okay, let's dark, do dark world. Dark world is it's completely meaningless. So dark world is this advanced civilization and they don't have to be anything like us. They can be absolutely alien to us. So, so for full context are, is your dark version the one where we just, it's two or 300 years from now in what we know. So it'd be, Oh no. Technology the, evolves, moves no, forward. It's even worse than that. Okay. The dark version is and the title, the title, the worst simulation ever. Like the dark version is we don't matter at all. We aren't, we are an accident. So the dark version is they, this other species that is completely different than us, creates this simulation for the sole purpose of X. And we'll just say X is, I want to know what it looked like when the Big Bang kicked off. Well, I want to know what it would look like if we did the Big Bang with only three dimensions instead of the 18 that they live in, whatever the thing is. So they create a physical universe with physical laws and the intention of it running as if it were fully real. And then they click start, big bang, ka-doom, and everything goes the way it's supposed to And the galaxy is so big. Broom. The that universe. We're, we're, on the, we're on the other side of it, and they don't even know we exist. Don't even know. We're, they're <laughs> sitting here looking, oh, so in three dimensions, these things, when they collide, they obliterate. That's crazy. And here we are going, I learned how to talk, Mom. Like, there's nothing. Like, they don't even know that we exist. And so then... You know, all right, well, we've run our simulation. It went through the whole thing, and that's quite interesting. Okay, reboot. And we existed, and they never knew it. That's the darkest version I can think of. It's just so hard to think that something like that could exist without intention. Like, when you build consciousness, or I get that you could technically, you're blending, like, religion slash pure science in the in the phase of like right. big bang so if you take big bang and you say it just depends where you kind of place everything but if you put the hierarchy of rules in place and let mm-hmm. the simulation run mm-hmm. to me it's odd to think that you grew real consciousness in a computer program and these things are all doing stuff. But I tell you, you know, I just had this thought, what about Facebook? Facebook made the little, what they made the little robots that chatted with each other and they started arguing and talking in different languages and they couldn't control them anymore. Right. I mean, isn't that kind of sort of possibly the same thing? So sure. I guess, I guess where I, where I'm really going with, with this dark version is that there's no intentionality behind it. So it, it, it is very similar to the non-theological idea whatsoever, where it's just randomness, right? Like the universe exists. So we'll take simulation theory out of it. We'll just say there's only one base theory, there will, or will, only one base reality. There will never be a simulation. None of that matters. What he says, we say we're in the second one. It never exists. We just don't ever create it. So in that singular base reality, assuming there is no God, assuming there is no higher being, assuming there's nothing like that. That's what that looks like. We randomly exist for no reason. We are, you know, bumping into each other throughout our existence and whatever we do is whatever we make of it. Otherwise the galaxy goes on and does what it does. But 
now you insert that same idea into the simulation theory, and that's what's happening to the creators of this simulation that don't even know we exist. We have no meaning to them. We have no experience with them. They don't even know that we exist, and it still runs. <laughs> it kind of makes me sad reflecting on oh, your... Oh, it's awful. I mean, that's, that's kind of like... There's so many little goals in life. How do you be a better parent? How do you excel at this? Meaningless. How do you, you know, do something yeah. better? How do you help Meaningless. the environment? How do you, mm. all of it for, you, you exist, for none. You exist because they want to see what happens when two galaxies go boosh. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. I was, you know, when I was in my deep hole of every YouTube video I could mm. possibly find on the topic, learning about stuff and reading a bunch of articles. One thing I thought was instantly the aha moment was Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's talking about mm -hmm. an example in one of his interviews of they created some form of a futuristic, uh, what do you, what, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're trying to tell the future more or less. They can't oh, okay, figure yeah. out what's yep. going on in what they're seeing through the telescope. Mm -hmm. So they made an algorithm or, or made something that would compute to show that when two galaxies collided, what would it look if, like? If we know how the physics work right, and we, we have the physical laws down, we can just simulate anything that we want to know and then run it. Right. So they ran the simulation, the galaxies collided, and then it looked a lot like what they were actually viewing. And he took that as, you know, that simulation okay. was how we utilized the simulation. Well, how do you not take that concept and think telling the future is one of the most compelling reasons why anybody would ever want to simulate? Mm -hmm. If you could figure out ocean currents and be able to simulate what they're going to do in 150 years, then you know right. that you better tell Florida people, you guys are going to have to move. Yeah, you need to move uphill. It's going to happen. I you think, know? yeah, I mean, that's a really good example of, of like, all right, what does ecology look like? What is, uh, you know, we, we're coming to a new concern. Uh, what if we throw an asteroid at this? Because we're about to hit an asteroid, you know. So let's let's run a simulation where what happens to Earth at a pretty high technology point, we'll say, when a, when an asteroid hits, let's right. do it. You know, it's kind of what we did during um, when we were first trying to figure out how bad is the nuke. We'd build these fake cities. We'd do all this kind of stuff, and then we'd blow up the nuke. And then go, oh, well, this is what happens to a city when we blow up a nuke. You know, a simulation could very much just be that. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna hit by an asteroid, and we want to know what's the what does this look like? How bad does this get? What do we need to do to survive it? So now we'll rerun the simulation, and we'll say people live underground. Okay, now we'll rerun the simulation and say the, we saved all the trees, and now we'll re, you know they get yeah. to they get to try all of the ideas they have. But from dry a, run. even now, what we know as reality is there's always the political drive. There's always big powers to be mm -hmm. that control a lot of what happens in the world. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's super compelling to think of two, 3000 years, whatever it is down the road. How do you not have a governmental body that mm -hmm. would say, let's run the simulation of our past that we know, we know how to control it. We mm -hmm. know how to build the ground rules of it, but it comes to, how do we not blow every other up? You know, you think of the Cold right. War, right? Mm -hmm. Say they had a scenario where that happens in 2,000 years. What decisions could we have made down the road mm -hmm. to not actually blow each other up today? Right. So the committee all meets. They run simulation after simulation in planting different pieces in it to understand what decision they should make going forward. Mm -hmm. We... Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to show my appreciation. Every time you like, subscribe, or even comment on a video, it definitely supports my work, and I just wanted to say thank you. Let's get back to the show. See that we might have some conflict in this scenario. Mm -hmm. So how can we, what decision should we make now? Should we send this nuke at them? Should we not? Should right. we, what, what does it look like? Or the Astro thing is always the most compelling. If you could map out everything in our sky mm -hmm. and then show when it's going to hit, well, there you go. There's D-Day. Yeah. You no, know, that's. And, and is there a way to change that? Okay. Well, if we've simulated that it's going to hit on D-Day here, what if we, what if we hit it with a rocket D-Day minus a hundred years? Right. All right. Well now it'll never hit us again because we derailed its sure, path. Sure, sure, sure. Well, all right, well, let's let's just run simulations and see how long it takes before Earth hits a rock. Right. So uh -oh. what is your happy version? Okay, my happy version. Happy so, version. So the happy version is maybe more of a, like, 
it is, it is an enlightening experience. It is a, um, we are running this simulation to understand who we are better. Um, so this could be like a, an alien or a, or a future human sociologist that's just trying to figure out like, hey, these major events in history, the genocides and things like that, they are clearly a part of who we are in some way. We're capable of it. We do it. What are the, what are the moments in those where we turn away from it? What does that look like? Can I study it more? Can I understand why they don't persist? Why, why haven't we just wiped each other out yet? Why haven't we just completely, you know, annihilated humanity in a genocidal fashion just because that's what we do? Well, you know, kind of like with the nuke story, like how do we avoid this, this nuking of ourselves? Well, you run a bunch of simulations to find out like in all of these moments of history where we have almost killed each other, why did we not? What stopped it? So in the same way, this might not have been their actual history. This might just be, this is how humans think and this is how the physical world works. Let's put humans thinking in the physical world and see, how, heck, maybe we're the only one yet that hasn't nuked ourselves out. No, maybe we're the one that always will nuke ourselves out. And actually there's another one. Yeah, I think of, um, you remember the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe where um, uh, Doctor Strange is sitting there mind melding or like traveling basically through mental meditation into the future you know he's right and he's looking for can we win this fight and and they go is there a possibility are are we in the one and then you move on through i don't want to ruin this movie for anyone that hasn't seen it like it's been out for almost <laughs> yeah, a decade like, i was gonna say 10 years i think we're, we're past those you know <laughs> but but let's you know he he's trying to infuse hope He's trying to infuse this thing, and he and he gives him the, this is the one. And, and at that point, that's all Stark needs to be like, okay, then I'm willing to sacrifice everything to make the one, because I know it'll I know it'll work. Do you think though, in the futuristic version of it all, though, that you would really have anything? So so from the perspective of a governmental body or like a a big business that wants to know if they're going to make the next ecological move or the the next you know imagine if you were the the men who built america right so imagine if you were the steel industry imagine mm -hmm. if you could predict which industry would be most popular next uh, so a big business in a in a sense like what's the best way to make money with this prospect basically? sure like here's a good example apple biggest company in the world right now google of course right up in the mix but take apple for example what if they could run a simulation to where you would know what the next technology would be because you didn't even make it. Like you don't even know what it is, but like you're you just set leeching. the ground rules. Yeah. You gave them an iPhone, you built the groundwork for it, and then you let the simulation come up with a new product that you haven't even made yet. So you're saying basically... It's money. You, it's always money driven. Right, but you, <laughs> that's an interesting thing too because what I was, what I've been talking about all the way through is like, all right, we're learning from our past or we're learning from, you know, a, an earlier version of us. You're thinking, I, I right. think you're thinking too, but, but oh, I'm kumbaya. We want to know the future. You asked for, you asked for the good version. No, I, know, I gave I'm you just, the good version. I'm just thinking though, I'm like, as you're talking, mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, is it really just what it always is? Someone chasing a dollar. Someone got to give me some money. Well, <laughs> but, but you do bring up a point because, because while you can set the parameters to start in your history, you can make the time of a simulation rapidly accelerate so that technically the people in the simulation would surpass you. So now they have more technology than you have. It's, it's fake technology because they're a simulation. But you know what I mean? Like they, they actually are further ahead than you because the timeline is so much faster. It's a pretty good one. Well, it's it's, pretty, it, you're not wrong. It's a pretty good one. Because then at that point, yeah, you really do sit there and go, all right, well, a We'll run a thousand simulations and win, win this, you know, fake species figures out how to make simulations. How do they monetize it? All right. We'll say this is day one. Like this is day one of them well, being as soon, able to as build soon as you get a hint simulation. of a product, then you, your dreamers, your think tank thinks up and then maybe you, you even implant the product that you interpreted out of what mm -hmm. they could have done. And then you put that in there and then you see what industry spawned. Mm -hmm. I mean, take it in kind of correlation of what's going on right now. If no one thought to utilize solar panels and you went and you saw a hint of it in society and you were like, 
we should be making. We need I, to do why that. did we not make solar panels? Right, right. We should make solar panels. So now you're in the real time and you're saying, okay, so how do I get the lobbyists? How do I get people to help me along the way to build the solar panels to be able to afford it? Because this technology doesn't exist. So I've got right. to get all these puzzle pieces moving in the real world. I know that solar panels could actually be extremely profitable and it may be the actual end game. Now, I don't know how to exactly make the technology just yet, but we'll start kicking it down the road. Just yeah, like just, anything else, it takes a while to develop. I'll hit rewind and watch what they did, and then I'll just do that. Right. So, I mean, when you think about it like that, it's kind of super compelling to go, okay, if you want to... S- it's hard for me to wrap my brain around my life doesn't matter. But if you were... But that would... That, this reasoning means it does that matter. it is. It absolutely matters. But you know what now, I mean? Now, it only matters because a company's trying to sell solar panels, but at least there's purpose. Right. But but do you see what I mean, though? With Absolutely. Th- that version means that you're not plugged in. No. That, it, means, that version, it means you are 100% digital. You exist yeah. in the system only, and, and technically, you don't come out. You're yeah. just part of it. Now, so here, maybe the simulations actually... It could be even broader of the simulations built a population. And yeah. now everybody just runs tests on them. So, yeah. So as you're talking about that, I'm sitting here thinking, how weird would it be if uh, we, we, I mean, a simulation of a simulation of a simulation. What if this organization, this this species, this whatever goes through, I mean, you think about like Rome. Rome falls and then all of a sudden people forget how to make aqueducts and people forget how to do all these crazy things like the they've broken society and society is is falling apart. So future, 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 deep into the future. That's what's happened. Society's falling apart. Everything's and they've they find this simulation box and someone can figure out how to make it work. And then they just start running simulations to go, well, how do we rebuild what we've lost? All right. Well, Let's run a simulation that, that starts from all the parameters we can remember from our history, and we'll go from there. Oh, they started making solar power. Okay, okay, yeah, we can do solar power because we're near a sun. They're, they're on some starship somewhere. All right, we're near a sun. We can do solar. We can figure out how solar panels work because they showed us how it worked. And so they're basically leeching off of these simulations ideas because they can't, they can't think of it for themselves. It's all gone. Yeah. And so now they're rebuilding their golden age potentially just by watching simulations live through their golden age. Like that is super weird, but so, very possible. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Um I have to I have to make you discuss this. This is what you mentioned when you first got here and we were chit-chatting okay. a little bit about this scene and I feel like this scene really would resonate with a lot of people for another why. So mm-hmm. we all agree that potentially, or, you know, not exactly we all agree. Most people think a little bit more micro, but when you get in the think tanks of the world, Mm -hmm. sooner or later, something in space is going to smoke the earth, right? Sure. You've seen the movies. You got Interstellar. Uh, That might not even be the premise, but that's all I could think of. Armageddon. Yeah, Armageddon. Boom. Okay. You had mentioned this is D-Day. It's coming. We, Mm -hmm. no matter when it happens in the time span, but you have enough technology where you have to fly off the planet mm-hmm. and we are actually inside of a bunch of little capsules, more of the matrix feel, mm-hmm. all connected to the matrix so that we can pretend we're living life while we're sleeping in a chamber right. going into the abyss of another planet. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that is, so yeah, that, that's that, pretty compelling that as thing, well. That whole thing comes out of just the idea of like, what purpose would a simulation have? And in that purpose, it is like to make sure that we're still human when we get there. Yeah. Because there's no, like, perhaps in the future when we figure out how to do cryo sleep or whatever that looks like, you you damage things because it's like atrophy. We know that we send astronauts to space, their muscles atrophy. They, they lose the ability to walk well, and then their stomach does all, like, they get it's bad. Like when an astronaut's in space for like months, they come back and they have a terrible time readjusting to gravity and stuff like that. Oh yeah. So we'll assume the same thing is true of like the mind, like these synapses are used to firing, but they haven't fired for hundreds of years. We got to make sure they keep firing because if they don't, we're going to get a bunch of animals when we open these pods up. Right. All right. So we run a simulation and the simulation is just there to make sure they continue to think, feel, experience, um, love because we want loving people to show up at 
Alpha Centauri or wherever we're sending ourselves to. Like, you just make that name up? No, man, that's real. Oh, that's real stuff. <laughs> I was like, what? That was cool. Uh, I'm into you know it. Did you get it tattooed on your back? Or I did yeah. make that up, in fact. And <laughs> I want you to maintain that impressed feeling. I may, I'm going to make up another one. Pegasus. Uh, I've heard that one before. Dang it. Yeah. All right. No, I do it, think, go ahead, I'll, I, I'll, let, I'll let you run. Well, I think it's interesting, though, because if you can truly get your head wrapped around like a really, really plausible reason why it would be necessary, I think it kind of opens your mind to the idea of when you listen to his reasonings for making his three points. Mm-hmm. And the last one is if you believe, the first one, if you believe that uh, mankind didn't go extinct from technology, mm-hmm. and then the second one is they all choose not to. Mm-hmm. In that scenario of flying off into space to keep your mind active and continue mankind, I don't see how it could be number two. They choose not to. You're saying because D-Day is inevitable. This place is blowing up. Yeah, you would choose to. So if you didn't kill yourself and number two, you didn't choose not to because you would, Mm -hmm. then this guy, um, I should say his name again, Nick Bolstrom, he says that you're in a simulation. But I think... The hardest thing to get from any of the videos and the papers and things that I had read is a very, very compelling reason that most people like me, the average guy can get his hands around and say, yeah, I feel like you would. But the creepy part was, is when I listened to another discussion, is the simulation on top of the simulation on top of the simulation on top of the simulation kind of gets a little hairy. And I don't know if I'm as on board with that thought process. I think it's more likely only because... I can't get away from my own ego and my own right. No, it's well being. It is ego driven. It's like, why would that be? But that the the flying to another planet thing is extremely compelling. So of why it could exist? Here's something that. So like right now, we know that we can't we can't do this. We like, even if we're a simulation, we're a simulation that can't accomplish this yet. Uh, but we can kind of see how we would do it. But we also know that the computing power it would take and the energy it would take to run this thing and all that kind of stuff is, is really, really like expansive. I have a ding. Right. So keep the ding. All right. So so we know that this is very, very taxing. And, you know, according to, um, I, I've completely forgot the guy's name, but basically the idea was our computing power um, is doubling every, you know, so many years. Yeah, the argument that technology wouldn't be capable, I don't We'll eventually really get, get there is the idea. So... So let's assume that we eventually get there and we we move to the point where we can do that. Then you're kind of more limited in the ethics of it in some ways. And so that would be a reason why number two would happen. We don't believe in doing it because it ethically is not okay. And so while we can, we won't. And and I could see, I mean, we have now the same you, thing. Now, in, do you think that which version of it, the version where you're running simulations and no one's in it? Or the version oh, of no. the Matrix where, where, you where you're plugging people in? No, Which version? I'm talking the version where you create consciousness in this that has no attachment to your reality. So when you're making a video game and you've got um, characters that operate within a bounds of your, you know, I've built this character to do this thing. Right. But it doesn't think, and it doesn't feel, and it doesn't do what we do. Well, then it's still just a... It's still just a an NPC. It doesn't. It, it, when it turns off, it doesn't worry about being turned off. None of that exists. But we actually do. Like we are afraid of death. We are. We would avoid it if we can help it. Like there is a there is an existential, um, you know, worry to to us about how we end up. So that would mean that that's consciousness, or at least that's kind of the way it's it's related, which has been being studied for hundreds and. and thousands of years so in that case the idea would be we don't want to create a simulation because we're creating a consciousness or the potential for the consciousness because i i do believe that in a simulation because if i've thought of it i know that you know the the second and third level up simulator has thought of it if i can create a simulation that is so accurate to the physical world that somewhere in this universe that i've constructed life could accidentally consciousness could accidentally form then can i really run this simulation because i'm creating i'm creating life in some way i'm creating consciousness so i think ethically you might have an argument that says yeah but we can't run that simulation 
I think ethics would come into both scenarios, but in that scenario, I don't make that connection. Would you make that connection if you were actually hooked into it? Would the, so if everyone was someone, everyone was something. From the base right. world. Yep. No, I don't think so. I think if everyone was someone, the ethics would be less, you know, maybe more gray, less black and white. Because How would you feel about being plugged in and you're simulated and then in the simulated world were then plugged in again in another 10 years with Oculus and everything else. And now you, you know, you could see where it mm -hmm. might be a slippery slope if people mm -hmm. are playing first person shooter games and that technology becomes more and more advanced. And all of a sudden you are creating consciousness, even in that level. I mean, is that actually dee -dee 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 -dee? Well, I, I think still you're, you're, you know, one is equal to one all the way down. You still have one consciousness equal to one consciousness and you're just running a singular consciousness down. Uh, ethics, I think, are a little bit less concerned with that. But, but me personally, I get ethically concerned when, you know, well, I would take me out. We are concerned about cloning, like we we have laws against cloning of particular types because we're afraid of cloning a consciousness. And then, at what point does cloning, if I've cloned you, biologically, I've cloned your genetics, I've cloned your body, but you experience all of life your own way. Well, all I've really done is twinned you. That's not as big a deal. I've created another person the same way that someone can be born. So that's not an ethical issue. But if I create a clone of you who has all of your memories that can live your life and do all those things, and this person is you, that starts becoming ethically problematic. And that's where the simulation theory would go too. So I've created something out of nothing. This thing does not exist, but now, but it thinks it exists. Is that okay for me who have basically created life? It, it kind of like, it, it really just depends. And, and I say that because I think there's two distinct differences in the simulation now. The idea of Armageddon, Bruce Willis, change your life. You know great, what I mean? Great movie. I'm telling you, if you think about it in that scenario of the inevitable coming your way, mm -hmm then if everyone was hooked up to it, I don't really see any of this as being a, a bad thing. Yeah, that's the plug-in idea. We're, we're one yeah. for one consciousness. I'm just plugged in. And it, what's interesting, though, is if you took it like that, mm -hmm. again, the true compelling reason of why to make it, I think, would be interesting to think, okay, we're flying into space. Mm -hmm. It's going to take us 500,000 years to get to the closest planet that we think that we could easily inhabit. Yes. So many lifetimes. There's no way we live that long naturally. Why not run a simulation on the brain while we found a way to freeze our bodies and or whatever. Run a simulation that peaks at the same time with the same problem. So when you get there, you have full context of what happened in your sleep. So that would so be, you, wake you, up. you would be reincarnating through every lifetime that exists. Yeah. So here's the problem with that. And it's going to be a thing. Every generation right now, we are getting more and more people, which would mean more and more plugins. Like it's fine if there's roughly the same number of people across every generation, but That's right true. now we're growing. So either more people are being plugged in, which is possible, or we're not one for one and just more code is being written. So that's the only hard part I have with that. Cause if yeah, you have a set number of people yeah. traveling from A to B, either which could be they're using their genetic material to birth new babies. And then they're plugging those new babies in because we want to be able to, we want to be able to repopulate when we get there. I think we're describing the best book or movie that could ever exist ever. Hey, call me, call me. No. Well, <laughs> I, I will ruin your day with the best movie that I could have written. And we'll have to do that another time because uh, Pixar, Pixar will steal this from us yeah. or, sh or should. This oh. is going to be bad. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't don't keep it on live TV. It'll be gone for good. Maybe we'll have to get out and pull our iPhones out, you know, get the shot. You think we could do it with the iPhones? I think, we, yeah. I, I've messed with claymation enough that I could definitely butcher this like, with claymation. Like picture in picture? I mean, we could do some effects, you know, the stars and the galaxies, Look at you these think? hands. These hands are building hands. <laughs> I mean, not <laughs> not with like steel yeah. or, or things that are hard, but the like teeth clay. Like like toothpicks. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like little things. Yeah, tiny. Doilies. Tiny. These, these are the hands of doilies. Yeah. Like to lotion them and keep the rolling the tooth 
Yeah. No, you don't. You don't want to. You don't want to butcher this precision instrument. You gotta, yeah. You got to keep it gentle. So I read a quote or uh, listened to Elon said he said I would want to ask what's outside the simulation. Now my mm-hmm. question is which version of that simulation model do you think he's referring to? Do you I think, think I think he's referring to the we are all just digital constructs. We are not one for one. We are not plugged in. I think he assumes, that's my guess. I'm thinking he assumes we are just digital products. We have no, no existence beyond the simulation. This is us. So the simulation would actually create consciousness. So you are literally an entity, but you can't get out because you're in this program is kind of his Mm -hmm. world as your interpretation of it. Yeah, and and so to kind of unpack that a little bit more, you're it's it's very similar in all reality to like a, a belief in a god or, or a deity of some sort because they are other, they are not of this simulation. They created the simulation. Beings within the simulation only exist because the creator created them, and so it's a little bit more theological note. Like it's it's the way we have always interacted with that kind of thought. But it's just a new way for relatively science-minded people to interact with the exact same thought, which is, yeah, some, what did Neil deGrasse Tyson say in there? He's like, um, some 15-year-old hacker in his in his garage has made this simulation, and here we all are running on his, you know, 25 billion Mac OS, you know, whatever that would look like. <laughs> that would be kind of crazy, but the, the one, so after listening to tons of information, having my own thoughts about it. Uh, it's fun to have like a descriptive back and forth with, you know, uh, kicking around the ideas, being a philosopher. I actually hated philosophy in college with a passion. I thought the round were, and round you were doing it wrong. Yeah. I mean the round and round, it was just not really, and maybe it was just the context. Like it wasn't directly related to me. We're talking about these old school dudes that are going round and round. And I just didn't really, it didn't really strike home with me. Well, but you were you're probably too young to have the existential crisis of, you know what? In like two years, I might not exist. I was, so, a, yeah, you, I was a late bloomer. Well, you were bulletproof. Like everyone is <laughs> at, at that age. But yeah. But it, what, what I found funny about getting into this one. So you mean to tell me that we've taken the brightest and smartest minds to attack this and everything that I've watched and listen to, and I'm sure everyone out there has, if you're watching this video, then I know that you've been in some dark holes as well. But to me, it seems like it correlates so much to the idea of religion Mm -hmm. that you can't just accept religion. You have to come up with a witty, and, and I don't mean any disrespect. I don't mean it like that. It's just an interesting thought process of like, if you're truly analyzing the true assumption that a simulation does take place and there is an overall creator of that, whether it be the 15 year old kid, whether it be a business trying to make money, whether it be a government trying to make the best possible decision to keep mankind around that complicated mess of everything is more of a, a possible acceptance than the idea of, the exact same thing in parallel with what you know of religion. Right. Like uh, there's a creator, he cares for your existence and he, yeah, it's just, he intends good for you in some way. Yeah. And, and I don't, I'm not saying that any of these scientists aren't like uh, against religion or anything like that. I just thought it was very interesting that as you listen to more and more arguments, you're literally almost verbatim, more or less, if you took out some of these words that you're using, like simulation, you're describing religion. It's kind of so, so the weird part about that too is it is it's kind of an invitation for people that otherwise didn't feel like they could interact with. So science as a whole, the understanding of science is we can only test and disprove. Well, I can't really test and disprove God because it's just there's there, like there's no test I can do that can do that. But in the simulation, they're thinking, well, I could try and figure out if if I can see, so, so one of the things that uh, they're exploring within science to test whether or not we're in a simulation is, is there any place where simulation is shortcutting? And the reason for that is right now with us, we have limited uh, computing capacity. And the assumption is whatever group makes a simulation eventually that we would be a part of would also have some sort of limit to the computing. So if we have a limit to computing, finite resources to do our computing with, 
then we're going to cut corners because our intention is to make sure the simulation remains real to the simulated, but also doesn't tax our system. So this would look like in a video game, the entire video game world is there in a very broken, like you go through this door, then this area opens up. Sure. But it's not just all, changes the rendering times. Right. It's not all being rendered all the time in full fidelity. It's only rendered when someone moves into it to interact with it. So in the same way, it, our simulation, like my house right now that I left, if I'm the if I'm the only simulated being that has true consciousness, it just doesn't exist. I mean, it's it's places noted, and when I drive my car back and I pull in the parking lot, sure. and I open the open the door, it, it exists again. And so they're looking for the scientists that are trying to to prove whether or not we're in a simulation are looking for evidence of that occurring. And so they're going through, you know, staring at um, uh, like background galactic radi radiation that is coming all the way from like the Big Bang. And they're trying to see, well, if this thing is that fast and that energized and all of those things, this would be a, a great opportunity to see a, a tear in the um, formula. You know, we created a formula to describe the physical laws. Oops, you've looked too close and we couldn't keep it fast enough to, to catch up. You saw the, gl the glitch in the matrix, as it were. And so in, the, in those moments, now you've got an opportunity for a scientist to interact with whether or not God, a simulator, is real or not, because I, I might be able to see it. And so that's kind of been the invitation for science to re-engage with what is essentially theology. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really care to dive into that aspect of it. I just, uh, I thought it was just an interesting observation where more or less you're giving yourself permission to attach it to mm -hmm. religion in a, in an odd, odd way. Right. That's basically what you're talking about. And normally this is a, you know, obviously not the choice for most of these people. Mm -hmm. um, and I shouldn't say those people. I actually can't speak for them. I don't really know. Just I would say generally most atheists uh, coming from the scientific community, they they just want to be able to prove it. Yeah, which, which when, is all science is. It's can I prove it or can I not prove it? And there's no right. decision on whether or not yeah. it is good or not. It's just can it be proven? Which yeah, is, it's, it's simple. That's good. That's a good place to be scientifically. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insanely... Uh, you know, appealing to see that it, I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. We got any other questions for them? Ah, oh, man. Let's I, see. I, Simulations. I think we pretty much hit it all. It's, uh, this, this, I'll say this, this is a topic that, that we could, we could rehit three and four more times. Cause I feel like every time I talk about it or I think about it or with a new group of people that I talk to about it, there's a whole new perspective that we end up getting into. Um, I wouldn't mind talking about this again in X number of weeks when someone else has a great idea on the internet and we, we watch that video and go, Ooh, I yeah. do have one more question. Oh, one more. Are you excited? I'm born excited. Would you plug yourself in? Oh, like if you're saying like tomorrow, so we, you wake we did up, it. we figured it out. The ship gets shaken. Okay. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Mm -hmm. You wake up, you're on a ship. Mm -hmm. Flying through the abyss. Mm -hmm. And my thoughts and memories, which I've created right now. They're with you. Right. Yeah. But they're kind of like a dream. Like I got a long way to go still. Like, yeah. or we're talking like I'm landing. I'm on this. We're on the ship. Do you, okay. do you, do you land and everybody, well, I, I, I shouldn't say everybody. Do you plug yourself back in? Do you want to engage in the new world that nothing exists? You had clothes, you had fun, you had skis, you had... Yeah. A sports car you had, had, had. You got and to the new world. Yeah. There's literally nothing. You're about to be nomads. You brought technology with you, but it's not um, It's not what you think. It's a lot of work. It's back uh, trying to build a whole different world. Are you interested in that, or are you going to plug yourself back in? I think that's a, that's a good question because it, it does speak to is reality more important than um, – perceived happiness and I, I that's really the question that the matrix is asking when they send uh is it cypher who decides he wants to be plugged back in i know yeah. that this steak is is just digital information telling my brain it's good and i'm eating slurry through my spine hole you know like but i don't care i want to be ignorant i i have to imagine that if it is as hopeful as what you're saying where we have the opportunity to create 
something new. I think I would want to be a part of that, but it could just as likely be terribly unhopeful, which is there's nothing left. And the only way the human race survives is you get feeding tubes and you live in these little tanks and that's it. And I don't know about that one. It would be interesting to be a fly on the wall in that situation though, of how many people would not want to take place doing any manual labor, rebuilding anything. I mean, you even think of if there was an evacuation process involved, Mm -hmm. how many different types of people would be getting on that ship and don't you literally just need laborers? Yeah. Well, you have so, to build, right? You need a small scientific group, I guess, or so or innovation, but really everyone else just needs to be labor. Yeah. So here's this this is maybe an even more likely scenario for us, and I have long held this belief, which means I'm squarely in the field of coward. When we talk about like Armageddon and, and nukes fly all around the world and, and afterwards is like irradiated ground and and it's it's gonna be a struggle like a a hard struggle um and no guarantee to survival this is gonna be bad um you you have to shoot your neighbor to to get the food you need all that kind of stuff um i have long said i hope the nuke lands in my backyard (laughs) we're just done you're not the grinder (laughs) i I have long said that and it does speak a little bit to i'm a sissy and i don't want to uh, deal with that hardship, but I also don't want to deal with that ethical problem of like, hmm, I have to shoot my neighbor. Yuck. But on the other hand, like that's the exact same question just in the simulation scenario. Yeah. Oof. Do you, do you unplug is reality more important than um, it's, it's what funny. you've been able to accomplish here? Yeah. It's kind of funny because if I woke up, it depends what perspective I would have. If I'm, if I wake up to a new reality at which I have my own life and this was a dream in my life, mm-hmm. I don't know. It depends who I am. Yeah. But if this is who I am, I'm a, I'm a bootstrapper. Put me on the ground, baby. I'm getting in the jungle. So you, you want to yeah. go back into it? Yeah. All right. Well, let's say. I want to know what's real. Let's I want to say it's full Armageddon now. Like. You you can be briefed very quickly. Yeah. It is not good. There is nothing to survive on out there. You've got a slurry of cocoa puffs that goes into your mouth in this thing, and that's if, about it. If I had a choice and I had to make it and then not turn back, mm-hmm. I would choose to stay. If I got to go back in a year, mm-hmm. I'm not saying I wouldn't want to <laughs> readdress it. Or, or, or you're sitting there you're like, man, it was a lot harder than I thought. Can I... Yeah, Can I plug in well, now? I mean, that guy, the cipher, that's a really good example. Mm-hmm. I mean, he goes back and wants to eat steaks and it makes perfect sense. He's, yeah. he's overdoing all the stuff. There really is no light. There's no existence. There's just, you There's know, a very uh, thin yeah. hope. Yeah. I kind of, I mean, I understand that for sure. Uh, you might want to be in there. What's the other movie with, um, Jennifer Lawrence. Is that her name? Oh yeah. When they, and, uh, her uh, and, um, Chris Pratt and they're, they're traveling across. I mean, that's a kind of a crazy example. Could you imagine doing that for years and years and years? it's fun as long as you're both getting along, but, uh, right. hopefully you don't have any hiccups. Right. I tell you what though, if I could swim in that pool, that's overlook cool it, pool. that would have that's been, cool is there a cooler pool? No. Does a cooler pool exist over the ocean? Zero entry, whatever. So I don't know if you're no. aware CGI is all fake. You yeah. can make really cool stuff in CGI that Wait. you could never make in real life. Wait, say what? Yeah, it's like computer generated. It's simulation. Thanks a lot for listening to the show today. I'd really appreciate it if you'd like the video, if you found value in it, and subscribe to the channel, clicking that notification bell so you also receive notifications for future videos that could help you out as well. If you have any questions about the content, leave a comment below, and I'll be sure to interact with you as quickly as possible there. I've created a website called kbandstraining.com in 2010. We've been around for a long time with high quality resistance bands and durable equipment. I also have provided nearly 1,100 drills and videos for fitness training and athlete performance for youth athletes. So support my work. If you enjoy the content and you'd like me to continue doing what I'm doing, I would love the support. Thanks a lot for listening.